Hello my Ironix Royalties. In today's tutorial we have this two piece to work on. If this sounds like what you would like to learn, please continue now with me to the end of the video. And please turn on your notification bell to get notified when I upload the sewing video. So I got three yards flowered crepe fabric for this tutorial. For the blouse part, I cut 30 inches wide and it 60 inches long. Then I folded this into four. For the back and front pattern is 14.5 inches, and the length of this is the length of this blouse plus the seam allowance. The seam allowance I'll just use about half an inch, like one inch rather. Like armor line, my bust point line my waistline is 19 inches and here will be our hip line make all these lines visible on this part we would have our shoulder the shoulder i'm working with is 16 inches and then divided by two we have eight inches plus half an inch for stitching allowance like so and then I'll take eight and a half or so on this line to create a square. My shoulder slope for the back and front is one inch. The neckline like so. I mark 3.5 for my neck width, three inches for the back neck depth, and six inches for the front neck depth. And for my beginners around, if you want a sewing video for this pattern, please let me know in the comment. Thank you. Now, I'll divide whatever I have here by two. Then, go in. I went in by half an inch. And I'll connect the point to each, like so. So here I started imputing my circumference measurement. The bust I'm working with is bust 46 divided by 4 plus 2.5. Now this 2.5 inches will be used to create that side ruched design that we have on this blouse. So, and then equally, if I, I mean, make a video of how to sew this eventually, I would show us how to achieve the sides. Kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos. Then on this part, I want a back that is just normal, not in as the uh, as the back uh, front pattern. So we'll leave our we we'll just connect this point to this point like so. So here, this is going to be our um back ammo so let me call that out so that you see now i will separate the back pattern from the front pattern like so now take your back pattern and then come in by 1.5 then go down by six inches right. then connect that point with a v using your curved ruler like so now when you are done cutting your back pattern should look like this after you open it up like th like this so you can go ahead to cut a facing for this or use a bias to fold this in so for this blouse my clients do not want a eye neck a bishop collar so i left it as a normal neckline if you want a tutorial on a bishop collar, a bishop neckline, please let me know in the comment section. Here is my sleeve unfold with a length of 10 inches. The ammo is 22 inches, so I divided that by 2. I have 11 inches, so I added 1 inch for my stitching allowance. For this person, the cap side I'll be working with is 5 inches. For an accurate caps height, this is your bust divided by 12 plus 1. Mark a slant line from this point to this point. Now, you see this line we have created? We are just going to take the value and divide it by 2. So I have 13, 13 inches here. 
So I have 13 inches and 13 inches divided by 2 will have 6.5. So on 6.5, you mark it this way and use that to create a line also. Now, you see this 6.5, 6.5, you are still going to divide it into 2 again. Now for 6.5, we'll have 6.5 divided by 2. So here is a 3.25. And then also 3.25. Now, at this point, you are to come down by half an inch, like so. By half an inch, like this. Half an inch. This is our half an inch for the slope here. So, what you'll be doing now is to connect this point to this point. Now, this is our center point. So you are, just, you are going to pass through the center point to get to this point. So starting from here, all right, you start from here, like so. Just make sure you pass through this point, like so, to meet this point. And then our sleep is 8 inches plus 1 inch for stitching allowance, okay? Now, to fold your front pattern for the trouser, is your thigh divided by 2 plus 1. For the trouser length, I did, I added about 6 inches to this. And I will explain what and what these 6 inches are for as we move on in this tutorial. Now, on my starting line, I went ahead to take 2 inches like so for my waistband because this trouser will be using an elastic here is our two inches mark for our elastic casing you can go ahead to fold it in in order not to get confused all right let's fold it in okay like so. things have saved me a lot especially from these shaky fabrics like crepes and chevons so now for my new starting line, I'm just going to do my, take my crouch curve slash hip line. To get your crouch curve like slash hip line, you're just going to do your hip divided by 4 plus 2 inches. My knee length, my knee here is 23 inches, 23 inches. The length of this trouser is 38 inches, so I added 4 inches extra to this length. So our additional 6 inches have been used beautifully, 4 inches at the M, then 2 inches for the elastic casing at the waist. So the first thing we'll be doing with creating our vertical measurement is to impute our hip divided by 4 plus 2. In this case, I have 14 inches. I will impute my 14 inches here. I will equally impute it on the waist too. 14 inches. Then I will create... We want to create our crouch curve. To do that, it's your thigh divided by 2 plus 1. So my thigh is 32 inches and divided by 2 gave me 16 inches plus 1 will give me 17 inches like so. Now, for the fact that there's a variation to size it, so we cannot keep using 2 inches for everyone's crouch curve. So for this crouch curve, of this, this plus size I'm working on to prevent common folding at that point. point. See whatever we have here. You will impute whatever you have on this this line to this point. This point to this point. I have three inches, so I'm just going to go up by three inches to create my crouch. So I always cross check with my one inch. Can you see that? If you remember the pattern I made for a client a blue pattern trouser palazzo you'll see that after I measured even with doing 
three inches here and doing two inches there it's still one inch guys so don't get it twisted all right now this is an elastic waistband kind of trouser all right so that means we are just going to impute our hip measurement here all right instead of taking my waist measurement at the waist i'll leave it at hip divided by four plus one hip divided by four plus one so the one inch is just for you to be able to shape it down to the hip area here so whatever we have from here to here will be used to create our center line so from this point to this point we have 17 inches 17 inches divided by 2 is 8.5 so 8.5 will be taken from this point so i will mark that 8.5 all the way to the hem divide your thigh knee and ankle by four and then spread your value on the, the sides, on the sides of the center line, like I'm doing here. Thigh is 32. 32 divided by 4 is 8 inches. So I've just done that, and I'll do the same on my knee. My knee is 24 divided by 4 is 6 inches. Then, this trouser, if you notice that trouser, you'll see that... From this knee line, it begins to get kind of wide, okay? So, now I want it a bit wide. So, on this point, I'll add one inch to it. One inch. I'll add one inch. So, whatever we have here, seven inches. So, I'll impute my seven inches also on my hemline. My dear Ronix royalties, if you have gotten value from this video, please do not hesitate to subscribe to this channel and share this video so it will reach a wider audience. Thank you. So, my back pattern is wider than my front pattern by 4 inches. And then, it is longer than my front pattern by 2 inches. So, what to do is this. Place it on the, place your front pattern on the back pattern like so. Now, for this pin, we are going to remove it. So that we can open up our two inches mark like so. Yeah, the two inches we mark at the beginning. And then, I'll make sure that it's aligned at the end also. Here is what we have. See, two inches up here. Two inches here, two inches here also. Now, at the waist area of the front pattern, I'll come in by two inches like this. Two inches. Then, go up by two inches. And then, so this part, this part, would use it to create a slant line to meet this end here. Now, this front pattern, we, what we have is 13 inches. On this plant line you have created, make sure it is 13 inches also. So, I'll mark my 13 inches also. Okay, that's our 13 inches for the back pattern. And then, on this front now, just roll it because it is 2 inches already. Just roll it this way. And then... So, I'll come out from this point, the square we created, by 2 inches. And then, this point will be connected to this point, like so. So, on this are 2 inches here, I'll come down by half an inch. I'll come down by half an inch. Just so it will align to the front pattern. Open this up and then so don't forget that this place is already two inches. Just mark it like so. Now on here, 
we need one inch sewing allowance just one inch one inch sewing allowance one inch so i'm good connecting that my one inch to this point on this tie line i'll come out by one inch then one inch here here also on the knee line i'll come out by one inch one inch okay i'll do the same at the hem connecting all of this one inch point mark like so So guys, what I have here is a length of 12 inches and then a width of 14 inches, 14 inches. So when I fold this, I would have 7 inches on fold, 7 inches on fold for the width of my pocket and then 12 inches for the length of my pocket. So what to do is this, I'm just going to curl this in, you can curve it in by about 2 inches, so I'm just going to curve that. Now notch this part so that it will be easy for you when joining. Thanks for watching everyone, I'll see you in my next one, bye.